Yes, Commissioner? You want to know about natural hollow spaces in the Earth? Got it. To the lab! Dedicated to solving subterranean mysteries in the deepest, darkest parts of... Caves! Bill Nye the Science Guy! Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. the science guy. Brought to you by Stalactite Interior Designs. Fine crafts for your home, lovingly created the old-fashioned way. One drip at a time. We live where we can see. We live where the sun shines. But there are places all over the world where there's hardly any sunshine at all. They're not up where we live. No, they're deep, deep in the earth. They're caves. There are all kinds of caves with all kinds of living things in them. When caves form wherever material or rock or ice gets carried away from an underground space stiff enough to support a roof. So there are caves under ice, caves under water, and caves underground. Caves can be almost anywhere. Take a look at this. It's our underground cave formation simulation model of science. Everywhere we go on the Earth's surface, there are rocks, layers of rocks. Now, some parts of the Earth used to be underwater. They used to be part of the ocean. So now we find places where there are layers of rocks made of ancient seashells. It's chalky rock, limestone. <laughs> so let's say this layer of sugar is a layer of white chalky rock, limestone. <laughs> now when the ground gets soaked with water, like after it's been raining off and on for 300,000 years, the water flows through the ground like a river. Chalky limestone dissolves slowly, and we get a cavern, a cave. Now, wherever water can get in, there's usually a hole or an entrance. If water can get in, living things can get in and start living in special ecosystems. We get bats, bacteria, fungi. Spiders and insects, fish and amphibians that we don't see living anywhere else. See, stuff that lives down here doesn't need light. And with all that rock and dirt for a roof, caves are insulated. The temperature stays about the same all year round. Caves are wild. They're cool. Well, they're constant, really. That's what makes them so fascinating. Things in caves change so slowly that if you made a footprint, it could be there for 200,000 years. <laughs> That's why I find this part of the lab so fast. These rocks were formed by water, 
dripping. The water is loaded with minerals. The formation growing down from the top is called a stalactite. It holds tight to the ceiling. The formation growing up from the bottom is called a stalagmite. It might reach the roof. Both the stalactite and the stalagmite were formed by the same drops of water. Dripping, dripping, drip by drip by drip. The whole thing really starts on the surface. That water is coming from above the cave. As it drips through the rocks, it picks up minerals. When it falls down here, it leaves the minerals behind. After a while, they build up. This stalagmite is, oh, four million years old. And you know what else? It's gotten ever so slightly bigger while we've been here. One drip at a time. Drip. 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 Just one little drip at a time, one little drip at a time. Time is no problem in a cave. Tired of waiting thousands of years for that stalactite to develop drip by drip? Now you can create your own stalactites in your very own home in a fraction of the time with Cave Co's Drip O Matic. Drip, drippy, drip, 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 You can make your own stalactite at home. Cool. You might need an adult to help you. I don't know, man. Boil a small pot of water and let it cool down for a couple of minutes. All right. Pour some into a really thick glass like this, half filled with Epsom salts. I can soak my feet in that. Keep stirring the Epsom salts into the water until it's all dissolved. Wow. You're fast. Take a cardboard box. Like that. And trace two circles. One around the bottom of the cup, and one around the top. Cut out a circle that's in between the lines so that when you set the cup in, it won't fall through the hole. Okay. Poke out three holes around the cup hole, like this. Set the cup in the hole and pour your salt solution in your cup. Cut three pieces of yarn and attach them to a large object like this washer. Make sure you soak all the string in the solution. Now hang it over the side of the cup and push it down through the holes. Make sure there's something waterproof in the bottom of the box, like this tin foil. You'll have to watch your experiment for a few days. Every day, the salt water will run out of the cup through the string. The water evaporates, but the salt stays put, forming your stalactite. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Pretty cool, huh? I guess. Try it! From the home office in Carlsbad, New Mexico, I now hold in my hand tonight's top 10 list. The top 10 things overheard in the cave. Number 10, drip, drip, drip. Who left the water running? <laughs> Number nine, I may be blind as a bat. Wait a minute, I am a bat. <laughs> they're all different kinds of caves, but they're not all underground. This is a cave, it's a lava tube. A lava tube? Well, yeah, it's uh, under the water. <laughs> this is a cave. It's under ice. It's an ice cave. It was formed by this stream. Ice caves form in glaciers, slowly moving rivers of solid ice. And under them, and they usually have a stream flowing through them, the warmth of the flowing liquid water melts a tube in the glacier. And we get a cave, an ice cave. They're cold. Burr. Ice. 
Some caves are formed by fire. Hot lava. When a volcano erupts, hot molten rock, lava, flows out of it. Sometimes, while the lava is flowing, the surface cools to form a roof, while the lava flows underneath. Eventually, when the lava stops flowing and drains away, we end up with a tube, a lava tube, a cave formed by fire. Lava, hot, ice, cold, hot, cold, caves, caves, formed by fire. Watching Cave TV, the best underground broadcaster in the dark. If you're going to spend all winter in a cave without eating, try hibernation. What kinds of creatures live in caves? Let's go to the chart. Uh, cool. oh. <laughs> over here. Oh. Mm -hmm. the, the chart. Yeah. <clears throat> First, you've got your troglozine. It's from old Greek words that mean cave outsider, or cave guest, if you will. I will. So bats fly around outside the cave all night mm -hmm. and come into the cave during the day to sleep. Go to sleep. And bears spend most of the year outside of the cave, but they go into the cave in the winter to sleep, uh, to hibernate. Now birds, skunks, and moths... Who? Oh. They live near the mouth of the cave, where there's just a little light, what we call the twilight zone. They're all troglozines. <laughs> Next, you got your troglophiles. That's from words that mean cave lover. These creatures love the deep, dark, wet environment of a cave. Who doesn't? Earthworms are troglophiles. <laughs> Finally, you got your troglodytes. That means the true cave dwellers. There are insects and spiders, amphibians, fish, and crustaceans that all live in caves. They can't live anywhere else. In fact, these creatures are often blind or they have no eyes at all. And they often have no color or pigment in their skin or shells. See, they're all cave creatures. Like, I'm a cave guest. Troglozines. Oh, come on. I love caves. Troglophiles. Because of all the cool things that live there. Hello. Troglodytes. <laughs> Oh, my! It's a giant freshwater crustacean! Bill. With no pigment in its shell! Better run! Uh, run! Bill. No eyes! No problem. I will be just fine. My ears and my nose. They will be my guide. You see, kids, a long, long time ago, some fish found their way into a cave and probably got trapped there. Now, the ones with the best senses of smell, touch, and hearing survived and passed their genes on. They're best equipped to deal with it because they can't see. So after millions of years of evolution, they became blind cave fish. Do you hear me? Blind cave fish. It's wet, it's cool, it's dark. We're in a cave. And the temperature and the humidity is always about the same all year round. That's because between us and the outside world, there's 250 meters of dirt. Meters and meters, football fields of earth. It's a good insulator. So the temperature and the humidity is nice and even all year round. That's why animals like to come in here to hibernate. It's comfortable. You never know what you're gonna meet in a cave. And now for our five-day forecast for the subterranean darkland. Monday, the cave will be 12 degrees Celsius, damp and dark. Tuesday will be 12 degrees, dark, with a high probability of dampness. 
Wednesday morning starts off a chilly low of 12 degrees, peaking to a high of 12 degrees with a 0% chance of sun. And on Thursday, will be 12 degrees damp and dark. On Friday, you're going to want some fresh batteries for your flashlights because it's going to be 12 degrees damp and dark. That's our five-day forecast. Tune in next week when we'll play this report over again and again and again. Don't be a fool. Cave TV is cool. Really, we mean it. The temperature is a steady. The temperature hardly ever changes in here. Ah, no, no, it's like, ah. Caves are natural hollow spaces in the earth. Some are on rocks, some are on ice, and some are underwater. But almost all of them are really dark. Which isn't so bad, because then I don't have to look at your ugly face. Hey, who you calling ugly? No, 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 who you calling ugly? You. Ugh, man. Deep in a cave, there's no sunshine. So how can anything live down there? Well, please consider the following. See those birds? Well, they're not birds. They're bats. They live in the cave, and they come up on the surface at night to look for food. We say they're nocturnal. That means going about your business at night. And uh, their business is eating, mostly. <laughs> Half a million bats, tons of insects every night. It's all-you-can-eat insect night above the Chihuahuan Desert. Even though bats live, to it, where the sun don't shine, their food, their energy, comes from, if you will, where the sun do shine. <laughs> See, their food passes through their bodies, and the bat droppings, what we call bat guano, ends up all over the floor of the cave. Now, for some organisms, this stuff is fuel. It's uh, bacterial breakfast, fungus food. See, those organisms feed on the organic material, the stuff from the organisms, the insects, that the bats have eaten. And then other living things feed on the bacteria and fungus, things like cave insects, or maybe even amphibians, and fish. Bats go out there, they go out there, sometimes at 100 kilometers an hour. They eat a few tons of insects every night, and they bring that organic material down here. And that allows you, the fungus, the bacterium, that allows you to party. That allows you to have your place in the cave ecosystem. It's a whole ecosystem that starts with the bat guano. So even though bats are active flying at night, they get their energy from up there. Energy. They get their energy from up here, where the sun shines all day. Energy. And they carry that energy deep into the darkness. Down into the darkness. Deep into the darkness. Down into the darkness. They bring life to the cave. They're busy. Busy as bats. Thank you for joining me on Consider the Phone. Number three. Mmm, that's good guano. Number two, hey, you Ozark blind salamander, you may not have eyes, gills, or pigment, but you sure got spunk. And the number one thing overheard in a cave. I love your cave painting. Is that an og? Huh? Ah! 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 As you may know, this is a cave, okay? And you're saying caves are dark and cold and I don't want to be involved in caves. Okay, because caves, caves are scary and spooky. Caves are cool. See those stalagmites? See those? You hear them complaining? No, they love it here. They love it. Look! Stalagmites were made for this place. No, wait, what I mean is this place made stalagmites. See, you'll never find a stalagmite like that with the sort of vampire drippy stuff. You're never going to find that on the surface. A hollow space that's under the ground In lava, ice, and limestone that found the caverns Caves and caverns Caves and caverns Different ways of forming now Water tree
Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. If you'll excuse me, I've got some speleothem growth acceleration curves to differentiate. Whew. See ya. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. Wonder where this one leads. Sometimes the flow of the lava is mad. Yeah, I was trying to shake the snow off my. You got bats bringing in guano. That's a whole other situation. Bats bringing guano. You don't have that, you know, in your kitchen cupboard. If you did, you would, well, it would be different. You never know what you're going to find in a cave. Whoa! Whoa!